So today's video is a little bit of an aside. I'm still working on my hybrid DML speakers, but today I'm really just looking at the woofer enclosures. So this started a couple of weeks ago. I had a comment on my previous video from someone named Janked MTG. What they were saying was that I should maybe reconsider doing ported enclosures instead of the sealed that I chose. Um, and I chose the sealed enclosures mainly just for space reasons. The manufacturer recommended box is like less than half the size of the recommended ported box. Um, so this just worked better with my design. So what this commenter was saying was you probably don't need to have the full 104 litre box to get better base out of this thing. Um, and then provided some measurements using modeling software uh, to show that, you know, basically what I've currently got can be improved upon with a more modestly sized box, still bigger than these ones, but maybe 50 to 60% larger rather than like 110% larger, which is what I had in mind. But what I thought today is I've been playing around in that software and it seems to indicate that I can maybe squeeze a little bit more even out of these tiny sealed boxes by doing the right sort of port configuration. Um, it's not going to be amazing, but I may be able to extend the base down a little bit. The good thing about my speakers, of course, is that a, a modular design, I can run this box and then I can just unbolt it, make a bigger one and drop it in later on. So what I'm doing today is I'm going to uh, port one of my boxes. Uh, I haven't put the lids on yet, so I'm just getting a new piece of MDF, drilling a hole in it, sticking a port in it, um, and then I'm going to compare that to the sealed, make a couple of measurements, um, probably try a couple of different ports with different enclosure tunings, and see if it's worth my while to actually do that for now, or whether I should just run the sealed one until I can make a bigger box. So once again, that's loads of talking. Let's do it. Let's take some measurements. No, let's not take some measurements. Let's make a port. This is WinISD. It's a freeware application that helps to calculate the behavior of base enclosures based on your chosen configuration, dimensions, and driver model. The team accepts donations, and according to their website, these mostly go towards beer. Anyway, you can find the link in my description below. 
My Dayton Audio woofer wasn't in the default list in the app, so I had to refer to the manufacturer's spec sheet and input the driver parameters. The blue line is my current 39 litre sealed box, and the green line is a hypothetical 65 litre ported box. Now, let's face it, the ported box obviously looks a lot better for base extension. Don't worry too much about the absolute SPL numbers, they're not really based on anything as I'm just simulating a 10 watt signal in this example. Following the example, however, you can see that while the sealed box has lost 3 decibels by around 47 hertz, the ported version doesn't get down there until around 29 hertz. Of course, there's a bit more nuance to it all, but obviously it's going to reach down a lot further in general based on this. Now let's see what happens when I reduce the ported box size to match the 39 litres of the sealed one. The gap closes significantly. The shape of this curve can be controlled by altering the tuning frequency of the enclosure. This is done by changing the physical volume taken up by the port itself, usually by changing its length, but you can also mess with its width and that has other effects. I'll jump into all this stuff in a later video in more detail. So using WinISD, I can play around with the various tuning frequencies until I can see a line that I'm happy with, and the software will then calculate the correct port size for me. WinISD tells me that I need to make the port 27.7 centimeters which I've done. Looking at the new graph, I can expect a bit of a bump at 50 to 70 hertz and a minus 3 dB point of 38 hertz, which sounds pretty good to me for such a small box. Now let's jump into Room EQ Wizard and take a look at the actual measurements I took. I've taken four measurements in total and they were all virtually identical above 65 hertz. So I'm gonna focus the graph in on only the lower portion of the measurement which was taken up to 500 hertz in total. I'm happy that they're all the same higher up the range as it means that my crossover won't be affected by any potential changes to the porting. Not that I really expected any. This is my first measurement taken with a 27-ish centimeter port for a tuning frequency of approximately 28 hertz. It plays relatively flat down to about 60 hertz, then drops off fairly steeply and is actually 3 decibels down by 52 hertz. So that's not exactly what I was hoping for. But what next? I changed the tuning frequency to 32 hertz and per the software I cut the port down to 20 centimeters and measured again. Here it is in purple. So slightly better I suppose. I've brought myself an extra one hurt of bass. One hurt, or is it one hertz? I don't know. One cycle per second of extra bass is what I have. All right, next, 35 hertz tuning with a 16 centimeter port length in orange. And it's the same. We seem to have maxed out my small box here. It's just not changing. But there is still one version that we haven't seen yet. I'll put it up in green now. Yeah, that's right. It's the original sealed enclosure, and it's roughly as good as the ported version. And now I've demonstrated practically what most people already knew, small boxes and base ports don't mix. Of course, this isn't the result that I wanted, but that's fine. I'm just sharing my journey and these things aren't always gonna work out the first time. So I'll be sticking to the plan. I'm going to build these speakers with the existing sealed woofer enclosures. Then down the track, I'm going to upgrade them to larger ported versions when I can. At that time, I'll also expand on the modeling process in another video, and we'll discuss some other considerations that need to be made when designing enclosures. We're going to get deep into this thing. And I just want to get these speakers finished now. And speaking of finishing, that's exactly what I'm going to do to these things in my next video, so if you are interested, join me then. Until then, thanks for watching, thanks for all the great comments, suggestions and advice. Don't hesitate to keep it coming. Okay, see ya.